Hello everyone! It's been quite a while since I have worked on a collection review and I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to share one and I was waiting for the perfect collection to return to my signature video style. So today I will review the products from Dior's summer 2015 collection and show you the tutorial for this makeup look starting with the base. So yes, I will show you my bare face again and I will show you how to use the new Dior Air Nude Foundation. Now, my favorite product from the summer collection is undoubtedly the Dior Sun Kissed nail polish. It is a light pastel peach and it actually matches the eyeshadow in the palette that I'll be using today and you can see it here along my lower lash line. It's a very subtle, not too pastel peach. I love that it has the perfect balance between yellow and orange. It just slightly enhances the warmth in my hands so it brings out the yellow tones and it just makes my hands and my complexion in general just look a lot more lively. So I highly recommend Sunkissed. Now for my second favorite piece in the collection, this is is the Dior Nude Skin Nude Tan Tie Dye Edition Variation to Blush and normally these come with bronzers or powders but this is a blush the first of its kind and it is in the really interesting unique tie dye style. The shades really do work in harmony because the sliver of the white it brightens up the nudie pink beige and the rosy beige as well as the mauvey lilac tone here at the top which is the most shimmery and you can actually blend all of the shades together which is what I did today and I think that the results are just so beautiful. It's actually a very natural blush and even though it's not as vibrant as the other colorway that I just mentioned, the orangey peachy one, I do think that this is a gorgeous blush and this will be my new everyday color because it has a satin finish. So it works really well with my clay de peau highlighter which I'm sure you guys have heard enough about. And of course we can't forget the Amber Nui eyeshadow palette and this is in the new formulation. So Dior redid the formula this year and I do think that it is a lot easier to use. It's still a touch powdery. The darkest shade did have a bit of fallout but the other shades are also creamy and easy to use. I do highly recommend using an eyeshadow primer. Normally I don't wear an eyeshadow primer but I have discovered that with the majority of these Dior eyeshadows an eyeshadow primer really does help the vibrancy last throughout the day. So even though I love Amber Nui it is a pretty basic eyeshadow palette other than the pastel peach here so if that's not your jam then this is a skip for sure because it is an expensive investment. The eyeshadow competition is pretty stiff which is why I recommend trying out the nail polish and the blush from this collection first. Now for the lip combination. I was so excited when I saw these tie-dye lipsticks because they're so fun and the formula is a little bit more sheer than I had anticipated. The color that I chose is more on the vibrant side of the spectrum because it is a fuchsia and it does lean a lot cooler than I had expected on my skin anyway. And I do think it's still a great lipstick. It's a good everyday swipe and go kind of thing. I would say it feels like a thicker version of a Chanel Rouge Coco Shine, but I still love this one and I think it pairs beautifully with the Dior Lip Maximizer number no. 7. And I think out of all the lip products from Dior Summer, this one is my favorite because these glosses tend to be very sheer. So there are two variations available, a lighter coral and a very pale pink. But this one can be used every day and it creates a slightly more plumped effect. So overall, Dior Summer 2015 gets a big thumbs up from me. I'm really pleased with all of the items that I bought even though this Dior smoky eye might not seem like anything special. I'm really happy to see that Dior is really working on improving their formulas and creating more innovative products to share with us. Of course these transformations are due in part to their new creative director so I'm very excited to see what the future holds for Dior makeup. Now without any further ado let's begin with the tutorial. We're going to begin this tutorial by custom blending my nude air with my Kogendo Royal Massage Milk. So you are seeing my bare face again. I haven't showed it since my last Shiomura Get Ready With Me video, but as you can see, my acne spots have cleared up a bit. I still have redness here. First, I take about a pump and a half of the moisturizer, and then I'll just place a few drops into the mixture and really blend them together. So this is a very casual process, so then I just go ahead and slap it on. That's really all that it takes. And I love the yellow tone of this color in 
Linen. This custom blend that I chose to use has coverage of a tinted moisturizer or a sheer foundation, but I actually like it that way because it looks so natural and it feels like real skin. So normally I just go about like this because I don't really feel the need to wear extra concealer, but because you can see a little bit of my redness and my acne scarring, I'm just going to go ahead and cover that persistent pimple as well as the rest of the problem area here. I skipped concealer under my eyes because I'm going to do something a little bit more intense today, so I figured I'd leave it alone, and I only applied concealer to my blemishes. So now I am powdering down my complexion just because it gets quite hot with the lights while I'm filming. So you can skip powder if you'd like. I'm using the Wayne Goss Holiday Powder Brush, my favorite, with my Burberry powder, another perennial favorite. Now I'm not going to finish the complexion yet because we still have to apply blush, but I just wanted to add a little bit more dimension to my face with a bit of bronzer. And I'm using Charlotte Tilbury's Bronzing Glow because I don't want to use a matte bronzer today. I want this look to be really dewy and luminous at the end. Now that I've shaped and filled in my brows, we're going to take the Amber Palette and I'm going to start with the center shade, picking it up with a Wayne Goss eyeshadow brush. And I've already put on a little bit of the Armani Eye Tint just to use as a shimmery eyeshadow primer of sorts. And it really helps the pink tone in this particular eyeshadow color to really pop and I think it enhances that iridescent quality of the pink. Now using a sponge tip, I'm going to take the coral colored eyeshadow. This is a matte and I'm just going to pop that right on top of the lid next to the shimmery highlighter that we just applied. And this is going to actually serve as a base for the lid color. I'm actually going to cover it with the highlighter to create a completely different shade. It's a slight frosty peach, but it's not nearly as pink as the inner corner highlight. Now, I am putting a matte brown on top of a shimmery eyeshadow, so it's not going to look quite as matte, but I really love how it creates a soft transition here in the crease, and it will make the whole look a lot more natural. It kind of grounds it. Now I'm going to take the taupe brown with Wayne Goss's number 18 brush, just flipping it over, and I'm going to saturate the outer corner going to blend that in here. Before I forget, I'm just going to take the applicator. Using the peach, I'm going to line my lower lash line, just as I did here. And it creates a really soft but defined lower lash line. Last but not least, I'm going to take the darkest brown and we're going to use a pretty generous amount, so make sure you tap off any eyeshadow fallout before you start pressing it onto the lids. And I'm going to start right at the outer corner and work my way in using a V-shaped motion to get right into that crease. I'm blending the colors together using the same blending brush that I've been using, again, by Wayne Goss. Now that I've layered on an adequate amount of smoky eyeshadow, I'm going to take the smaller side of the applicator, the finer point, and I'm going to take the dark brown and just line the outer corner, smudge it into the coral shade a little bit. And I just personally find that this completes the eye look a little bit more. It makes the eye look more connected to the outer end of the shadow as opposed to the lash line just floating around. Now for the final touch, I went ahead and applied black pencil eyeliner to my lids, winging out just a little bit. Then I'm going to take the angled applicator one more time and using the dark brown eyeshadow, I'm going to smoke out that pencil liner and create a really subtle smudged effect. And this might create a little bit of fallout, so I have a brush with a little bit of powder handy. And I'm just going to press the applicator against my eyeliner. This technique is super simple and it really works for this look because it creates a really diffused look for the eyeshadow. Nothing's too bold, nothing's too harsh. It just creates really soft edges with a lot of definition so it still looks smoky. Then I'm just going to brush away any eyeshadow fallout with a Wayne Goss brush. I actually like this one the best for fallout cleanup and this one is 
the number 13, although this is the most popular for foundation actually. And for the finishing touch, I'll be using this new pair of Velour False Lashes. They're called Rich and Fluffy. They're absolutely gorgeous, so I can't wait to put these on. They have a really wispy style, so as you can see, the fringe is quite wispy at the ends, which makes the lashes look a lot more natural. They don't feel too heavy because there aren't as many fibers for the lashes themselves, so they actually don't weigh down my eyes or make me feel like I can barely blink. And if you're really interested in these lashes, definitely try out my coupon code, RayVelour. You can get 15% off, so I'm really excited. New favorite lashes. Now it's time to play with my favorite piece from this collection, the Tie-Dye Nude Tan Blush. And as you can see, it has multiple colors in one palette. So I'm going to swirl them all together with my Chikohoto brush. That's going to sculpt the face. And of course, now I'm going to repeat on the other side. It's a pretty neutral rosy color. It's nothing particularly spectacular, but I just think that it's very flattering on the skin. And I was a little worried that because it's a cooler pink with a cooler purple that it might lean too cool, but it's a nice bright pink actually. I apologize because my lips are ultra dry. I totally forgot to exfoliate them before beginning this video. However, I will show you the lipstick. This is the tie-dye edition and it has the most beautiful CD imprint on the lipstick bullet as you can see. And I love that the logo actually runs through the entire bullet. So yeah, you will see this even at the bottom of the tube. So I highly recommend this and I think it's one of the best attic lipsticks that have been released in a while. They're just fun and interesting. And sometimes designer makeup can get boring because it's just repetitious sometimes. You know, they just come out with very similar shades and very similar products again and again in slightly different variations. But I think this is a really fun and unique, spunky pr new product. So this is number five. Fuchsia Utopia. This has a really silky, lightweight, balmy formula, but because my lips are so dry, it's actually accentuating the dry patches a little bit. So I'm rubbing it in with my lip, with my fingertip, which I do find really helps to meld the product with the skin, so it looks a lot more natural as opposed to just sitting on top of your dry, you know, patchy lips. So now the flakiness is a lot more subdued, and I'm going to top off the lips with the new number seven lip maximizer, and this. Is a really great nourishing gloss so it's perfect for my very very sad dehydrated lips right now and the cool thing about this is that it's a plumping gloss I really love the subtle peppermint tingle and flavor of this lip gloss it smells really nice and I think it's perfect for summer when you need that little refresher to get you going through the day especially when it's hot and sunny that little menthol kick really helps clear your sinuses and it just makes you feel fresher so now that is a wrap for the makeup look. I truly enjoyed getting back to my roots and creating another collection based video for you. So if you have any more questions regarding these Dior products, please feel free to ask. And even though these are not a part of Dior Summer 2015, I highly recommend you check out the new collection of these Rouge Brilliant lip glosses. They are truly brilliant in terms of their formula. They wear well, they don't accentuate lip lines. Plus I love the new packaging and incredibly innovative new applicator. There is a well inside this doe foot applicator so that you get more intense color coverage from a lip gloss. Genius if you ask me. So I'm really impressed with what Dior has been doing this year. I think they have been truly the brand to watch. So I am very excited to see what the fall offerings will be. Thanks so much for tuning in as always though and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!